Hi everyone, welcome to IT Knowledge Base. Back again with very perspective content of NMAP Hacking Network Series Part 2. After this complete hands-on lecture, you will familiar with NMAP host discovery options and will be able to describe confidently as well as use it in your network for security auditing. So to reiterate, the purpose of making this series is to educate individuals who really want to build their career in information and cyber security. Okay, let's start and discuss some necessary knowledge about the NMAP and see the discoveries example in action. Command number one, list scan. The list scan lists each host of the network without sending any packets to the hosts themselves. This method is useful when looking to find the DNS names for specific targets. You can also find how many usable hosts addresses are available in the specified subnet. Command number two, no port scan. The no port scan option simply means that you don't run a port scan after host discovery is done. It only prints out the available hosts that responded to the discovery probes. You can also call this a ping scan. Command number three, no ping scan. The no ping scan skips the complete NMAP discovery process. NMAP directly starts to run its default port scan, which is 1000 most ports, if it finds the target IP is up. Command number four, TCP SYN ping. This scanning option sends an empty TCP packets with the SYN flag attached to it. The SYN flag tells the remote system that you are attempting to connect to it. If the port appears to be open, the target host will start the second step of the three-way TCP handshake by responding with an SYN act TCP package. This is especially useful for certain systems that block ICMP ping requests. TCP SYN discovery works on port 80 by default. Command number 5, TCP ACK ping. This method is also useful for networks that block ICMP requests. It discovers hosts by responding to non-existent TCP connections to provoke a response from a target. If it finds our target is up, it runs our default port scans against it. TCP SYN discovery works on port 80 by default. Command number six, UDP ping. 
The UDP ping sends UDP packets to get a response from a target. Most networks firewall will block UDP requests if they are properly configured. Although it is worth a try to run it anyway. Command number 7 SCTP INET ping. The SCTP stands for Stream Control Transmission Protocol. It's mostly used to discover VoIP, voice over IP, IP telephony based systems. Command number 8. This sends a default ICMP ping to a target and checks if it replies. Usually, if a network is properly configured, devices are set up to not reply to ICMP requests. Command number 9. ICMP timestamp ping. Most systems are or should be configured to block ICMP echo ping. It is possible though that they still allow ICMP timestamp pings. So this is always a good option to try. Now let's first confirm that ICMP ping is blocked by the firewall. Then run the nmap with a timestamp flag to check whether the target host is alive or not. Command number 10, ICMP address mask ping. This address mask ping also uses an alternative ICMP request to provoke a response from a target. Another option to possibly bypass a firewall that is blocking default ICMP requests. Command number 11, IP protocol ping. The IP protocol ping allow you to send packets with specified protocols to the target. However, if you do not specify any particular protocol, the default protocol ICMP, IGMP and IP in IP will be used. To specify a protocol, use NMAP-PO switch and so on. Command number 12, R ping. This is the fastest method of discovering host on a network as of now. The biggest advantage is that R request cannot be blocked by hosts on a network. No matter if there is a firewall involved or not, you have to have access to the local network though. Command number 13, trace route. You probably came across the trace route or tracer on Windows command before. This is the same. It traces a route to the designated target. If you run it against google.com or any external domain, the trace route output would be much longer.
command number 14 force reverse dns resolution with the dash capital r tag you can import this and nmap will try to resolve the dns names of all the specified ip addresses be aware though the capital r option will decrease your scan performance tremendously Command number 15. Default DNS resolution is only used against hosts that appear online. You can disable DNS resolution altogether if you do not need it. This will increase your scan performance and decrease your scan time tremendously. Command number 16, Alternative DNS Lookup. While not very often used in the field, this option allows you to tell Nmap to use the host system's DNS server for the DNS Lookup. This scan slows down your scan time even more than the normal reverse DNS Lookup. Command number 17, manually specify DNS servers. Look at is used to manually specify a DNS server for your NMAP scan. This could be used if you want to avoid your DNS requests appearing in the local DNS server. Okay, now wrap up this lecture. This lecture had better enough to get you our ongoing. I endorse you should build a lab and test out those basic commands which we have qualified. See what evidence you are able to gather and how to process it. Run scans against different targets and against different operating systems. Alright, that's all for the now. I hope you have learned something here for sure. In the next part of the series, I will talk about advanced NMAP commands with minimum theory and retain our focus on hands-on specifically. I will see you over there. I look forward to join you through this lecture and thank you for being here. If you want to see more awesome training content, make sure you click that subscribe button. Click it so you don't miss it. Thank you.